Right, we're going to look at uh, a variety of cold starting aids that we come across in plant machinery. So a good starting place is to start with the Bowmike pedestrian roller. And it's a good one because it's equipped with a single cylinder hats engine, but it has four different cold starting devices. And the first one that it has is the excess fuel. So let's have a look in there and you can point out the excess fuel button here. Now when you're starting the engine, the control lever is here and you can see here there is a position for stop, min, max and then for starting the engine. So if we want to operate the excess fuel, we will put the lever into the max fuel position. All the way forward for starting and then we're going to actually now listen out for it, you're going to hear a click because the excess fuel rail is being held back against spring force and as soon as we pull up this button the excess fuel rail will fly forward. There you can hear a click into position. Right, so that's excess fuel engaged so now we're going to go and look at the next thing is automatic decompression. So you can see here there is a lever here and if we turn it to the first position it keeps the engine permanently decompressed, so she'll never start in that position. But if we wanted to ratchet round as we're turning the engine, we're going to move around two little clicks. Okay, and now we're going to go and start the engine. Okay. The next one is oil. So if you have a worn cylinder or you have a cold cylinder, the piston won't have expanded fully to get a good gas tight seal in the cylinder. So what you can do is enhance that seal by putting in three or four squirts of light engine oil. And what you would do then is just slowly turn over the engine to allow the soil to work its way down and when it's down into the cylinder the oil forms a temporary gas tight seal and that aids cold starting. Another one on this thing here is starting caps. So we're just going to whip out the holder for the starting caps and we're going to print the starting cap and just show what it does. So starting caps are just a combustible material coated in a combustible liquid. And what it does is when it fires, it gives you that extra sport of energy. So we're just going to put one in and actually light it. Now, it's not, um, it's not a major thing. It just gives you a little sport of energy, which lets you turn the engine faster and helps cold starting. So that's all that's happening there. So we're actually going to put a fresh one in here. And we're going to cut off the fuel supply. And we're just going to turn the engine over on a fresh plug so any activity any combustion activity we see is going to be as a result of the starting cap that we're just putting into the engine now so i have the automatic decompression lever in on in the correct place so we're going to now aggressively turn over the engine and watch the exhaust pipe and any smoke that comes out there is purely as a result of the starting cap That's it. And that's all it does. So it just gives the operator that extra little sport of speed when he's turning over the engine, which means that the compressed air, the hot compressed air, the heat has less time to escape into the cooling jacket, so you have a better chance of firing the engine. So that's the four starting devices there. Um, next thing we're going to look at is glow plugs. So here we can see a typical glow plug. And it is supplied with electricity here. And down here, in an envelope here, you have a piece of resistance wire. And one of the three effects of electricity is heating. So when we pass current across it, it becomes red hot and heats up the cylinder, giving us a better chance of starting an engine. Now, we're at a training board here. And you can see we have some glow plugs, four glow plugs wired up to a, re uh, to a solenoid. So we're going to operate those now and give you a look at the four glow plugs as they operate. And we have a protective cage around them there, just while we're in the workshops. 
So that was the solenoid clicking in. And there you can see the four glow plugs walking away. So that's when you're giving your, your engine 20 seconds heat. That's what's actually happening there. Okay. Next device we're going to look at is thermostats. So a thermostat is a device that has a heater coil in here, ignition coil here, and is supplied with fuel oil. So the fuel oil is here, and when you pass electricity through these coils of wire, they heat up, and they cause a ball valve in here to leak. The fuel oil comes out, gets vaporized, and is ignited on the red hot coils here. So this again would be like uh, with this type Lucas ignition switch. It's when you turn on the ignition and you go half against spring force, it energizes the circuit there. So we're looking in there now and you can see the coil plugs getting red hot. Now, because the engine is not cranking, we're going to have to prime it there. But there you can see her. There she's working away. So that's a thermostat device, very crude. So now we're going to just start the engine just to demonstrate. There you have it, seven or eight cold starting devices. Moving on to uh, petrol engines now, um, two stroke engines. We can see here a still console, and first of all, she's equipped with a choke flap. So you can see here, we have no choke, half choke, and full choke. Now, choke flaps only work on petrol engines with carburetors. And there you can see the flap, that's in the full on position, and that's in the off position. And what the flap is doing is, it's literally choking off the air supply to the engine. So as the piston attempts to induce air fuel in, it can't draw that much air, and will draw more on the fuel jets, hence richening the mixture. The more mixture you have, the more vapor you have, the more vapor you have, the better chance you have of starting the engine. So that's your choke flap. In addition, this machine is also equipped with a decompression button. So you can see it there. And the purpose of the decompression button is it relieves compression in the cylinder when the operator is trying to start the engine. So it allows the operator to turn over the engine faster when trying to start, which means that any heat that's generated by compressing the air has less time to escape to the cooling jacket and so is available to aid cold starting. So we're just going to take a look at it here. There's the actual button. And we can see the button operating there on and off. And basically what it does is just relieves compression in the engine cylinder. So here we have a spare cylinder head. And we're just going to screw it in and show you how it works. And screwing it into the engine. And we're going to operate it. So there you can see the button opening and closing. That's how your decompression button works. Next devices are for four-stroke engines, and you'll find them in small plant machinery, such as small water pumps or lawnmowers and stuff like that. And what it is, is on the back of the exhaust lobe, you can see there's an extra little lobe here. And what this guy does is, um, he momentarily lifts the exhaust valve off his seat, thus again relieving compression, thus allowing the operator to turn the engine over faster, aiding cold starting. Now obviously you don't want this to happen at high speeds, so the whole mechanism is equipped with a centrifugal weight, which we're going to operate now, and you can see it coming on and off. So that weight will fly out as the engine speeds up. So this device only works at very low engine speeds, such as when you're cranking the engine. And you can see here, the little lobe, at low engine speeds, it's in, and it will briefly lift the exhaust valve off its seat, but at high engine speeds, it moves out. 
and it allows the camshaft to operate the valves normally. So there you have it, automatic decompression at low engine speeds.